death, leaving family and friends behind. Canada would become home, at least temporarily. Drafted by Vancouver, he played for Canada at the Olympics. The Blues in St. Louis. The Rangers in New York. And the Penguins in Pittsburgh. Many uniforms in many colors. Today, he's back home for real, playing for the Czech Republic, playing for his old country. to present the 1996 World Cup of Hockey. Live from Prague, it's Sweden versus the Czech Republic. Hi, everyone, and welcome to TSN's continuing coverage of this inaugural World Cup of Hockey. I'm Darren Detition, along with TSN hockey analyst Bob McKenzie, and we'll talk about our game in just a moment or two. We have to talk about Canada. Everybody's talking about Canada, Russia tonight, and I know that you really like this Canadian team. Why are you so adamant that they will win this tournament, Bob? Well, I recognize the fact that the Russians, the Americans, the Swedes, the Finns, even the Czechs, everybody's got more talent and more depth than they have had in, pa in the Canada Cup tournaments of the past. But the one thing that Canada's got going for them is a greater fear of losing. I believe that Canada wants to win the tournament, the Russians, the Americans, the Swedes, the Finns, they all want to win the tournament. But there's only one team that is deathly afraid to lose it. And that motivation is what, in an adverse situation, will push Canada over the top. I think the, in the past, the Americans and the Russians have found it too easy to rationalize losing the tournament. They can walk away from this tournament in second place and say, well, we did well, we can rationalize it. The Canadian team that walks away in second place can't rationalize it. It's our game. We believe it is our game and that we should win it. And that's the attitude of the Canadian players. And in a tough circumstance, I really believe that's what puts them over the top and gives them a little extra edge over the teams that they're playing that are almost the same in terms of talent now. And we'll talk about our Canadian team in greater detail a little later on. Fear can be a very good motivator. Uh, what about this afternoon's matchup? You've got the Czech Republic team that needs a victory. They did not play well in their opener, and this is also a big game for Sweden. Big game for both teams, and really a big game for the tournament, not just for this year, but for the coming years. And the reason I say that is very simple. Dominic Hasek is on the sidelines. He was apathetic towards this tournament. He decided that he wanted to be more ready for the Buffalo Sabres than for the Czech Republic entry in this tournament. Now, the Czech Republic got off to a very rough start against the Finns, and a guy like Hasek would make the world of difference in this tournament. Now, if they have a bad game against Sweden today, if they crash and burn in this tournament, so to speak, I really believe that players like Jaromir Jager, who I think had to have his arm twisted a little bit to come and play in this tournament, Peter Nedved and some of the other bright young stars for the Czech Republic are going to look at it and say, who needs this aggravation? Who needs to go into a situation where we've got a world-class goalie, arguably the best goaltender in the National Hockey League over the last three years, decides he doesn't want to participate and we're coming in with, with less than our best net minding. Why do I need to bother giving up my time and effort to come in here and getting blown out? And that apathy can be like a disease and it can spread. And I really believe this tournament needs a strong check entry. And right now they're at much less than their best because Hasek decided to stay home. And, and we've already seen a little apathy in terms of this Czech team and Roman Turek in the first game pulling himself after giving up three goals. Now Sweden uh, has some problems between the pipes as well. Yes, they do. Tommy Salo, who played so well in their uh, opening game, uh, has had to go back to Sweden. He's had some sort of stomach disorder. At first they thought it was appendicitis. They're now saying that it may just be a case, a severe case of the stomach flu. In any case, he has left Prague and he's returned to Stockholm, may be available for Team Sweden in their game on Monday against the Finns. But in the meantime, Tommy Soderstrom, who I believe might have been getting the start today anyways, uh, New York, uh, the other New York Islander goaltender from Sweden, 
Uh, he will be in net today for the Swedes. And Johan Hedberg is the backup, so he'll assume that role. Uh, it, like you mentioned, it is a big game for Sweden. They're on that collision course with Finland. For the Czech Republic, they got to bounce back. Peter Nedved says it's a must. Well, guys, talking to a number of uh, the Czech journalists, one thing is for sure, there was an awful lot of pressure on this team heading into this game. Number one, it's a home game, but number two, they've been roundly criticized in the press for their lack of team play in that first game, which by all counts was a disgraceful performance. Well, they should be criticized because they not only played poorly on the ice, they were not disciplined off the ice, they weren't prepared, and as a result, they just plain blew game number one. However, they feel confident that coming into game number two that they're a much better prepared hockey club. I don't know that you can just turn the light switch on all of a sudden and get in great game shape, great team shape. I think there are still some difficulties on this hockey club ball. Oh, sure you can. You know that. You used to coach. Just click. It's on all of a sudden. Uh, on the other hand, when you look at the Swedish team, they are very concerned with the Finns. They watch Finland excel in two games, and they're feeling the pressure. They want to have a good game because they know that Finland is the chief opposition. They want to be sharp for them. Well, they feel right now the pressure in this game because they know that the Czechs have got to play a lot better than they did, of course, in their first game. Right now, this Swedish team is a very cohesive team. They have lost Tommy Sala, who's back in the hospital right now, so Tommy Soderstrom is going to get the start tonight for them. But this is a Swedish hockey club that's very determined right now. They know the importance of winning this hockey club. They're not, they're trying not anyway, Paul, let's put it that way, to look ahead to Sunday's game against the Finns, but that's very difficult not to do. Yeah, they lost Tommy Sallow, by the way. He's gone back to Stockholm to be looked at. Uh, he has, they believe, some kind of a stomach virus. They're not sure, so they wanted him to go home and have it checked out. Uh, thanks very much, gentlemen. Like we said, it's that collision course between uh, Finland and Sweden. Everybody's gearing up for that hockey game. Well, they most certainly are, but I think the guys touched on a very important part for Sweden. You can't look ahead to that game. This Czech team, we talked about it, they've got all sorts of talent, especially offensive talent. They can shoot the lights out. And what happens is if they get up a couple of goals early, then they can be off to the races and they, they can score in bunches. We saw they got a one nothing lead on Radek Bonk's goal the other day against Finland. Uh, but as soon as the Finns came back and scored a couple of quick ones and ended up making it 3-1, they basically threw in the towel and there is a lack of cohesion. There seemed to be a lack of heart in that game and I really think this is going to be a gut check time for a Czech team. You think 20 years ago, 1976, in the inaugural Canada Cup, uh, so it's the 20th anniversary of that, it was, the Czech team was in the final and, and there's, they've got a very proud uh, and excellent hockey tradition and you'd like to think they're going to come out here today and show a lot more jam than they showed in the game against Finland. Yeah, because their game against Finland, you didn't really catch that sentiment at all that they were here to play. Uh, Peter Nedved, as Four mentioned, he understands how important this game and he says they got to go out there and play a lot better, specifically uh, on the blue line. We have to regroup as a team and uh, uh, we play an uh, awful game against Finland and uh, and uh, we have to regroup, especially in, uh, in our own zone, and, uh, and uh, wait for, for their mistakes. And, uh, and we have a lot of talent on our team, but uh, if you're going to play the way, we, uh, the, the, the way we play in Finland, I don't think we're going to beat anybody. Well, they do have the talent up front. We'll see if it shines through this afternoon. We'll take a short break. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. We can go. Okay. I'll go get them. It's nighttime. Oh, yeah. When you want to get festive. If anything holds you back. Hey, hair boy. Let's go. Remember, it's your duty to motivate. Allow me. Oh! Can I motivate or what? Dry brew. 5.5% alcohol. Wholesome and dry. This could be good. Nope, this is a direct marketer. Things like checks and forms and business cards and labels. You know, being in a small town doesn't hinder our business at all. The majority of our customers use either the Advantage toll-free phone or fax line. And really, the 1-800 lines are the lifeline between us and our customers. We've had an increase of about 35%. If our 1-800 lines went down, we'd be out of business. Advantage, providing solutions for business. And that's hockey with Dave Hodge. Debuts Monday. 
Carter at the plate. Gonzalez at third. This game is all tied up. One swing of the bat could end this one right here. Here's the pitch. Hit deep left field. Way back. Out of here. Live and interactive. Now the same NTN Diamond Ball hospitality game you're used to playing is available on TSN. You can win big prizes and compete with sports fans across the continent. NTN Diamond Ball on TSN.ca. Every time you watch Blue Jays and Expos baseball on TSN. The Czech Republic should be motivated today playing in front of their countrymen. Let's take a look at the starting lineup, specifically the goaltenders for the two teams. Starting with Sweden, we already mentioned that Tommy Salo is out due to injury. Tommy Soderstrom gets the start. What's the book on him, Bob? The book is that he's got the wonky ticker. He keeps on having to go in for all those treatments, but he appears to be all right, and he's going to be there for them today. He's a little bit inconsistent. That can be good. It can be bad. Inconsistent means you're a streaky goaltender. He can go in and steal a game if he's on his game. The wonky ticker? That's the medical terminology that we're going with, the wonky ticker. Uh, you might question Roman Turek's heart as well, because in that opening game, uh, he did pull himself did. in the lineup. He also had the wonky ticker, as did the rest of his teammates, to be fair to Turek. Pulled himself after the score got to 3-1. to one. It was not a coach's decision. You could see as soon as that goal went in the, net, uh, the puck went in the net, he was on his way. And there was a lot of finger-pointing by the Czech goalies, both Turek and Breeze at their defenseman after every goal. That kind of stuff has got to start, and you've got to believe they've got to be inspired playing in Prague. Hey, a lot of these guys left when they were very young, and they're coming back as a team together. It's got to be an exciting thing in Prague today. We'll take a short break. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on the Sports Network. Stay tuned. NFL sizzle is headed your way. Go deep and go interactive as the Bills and the Giants get it on in their season opener. NFL excitement. Catch it on TSN. You didn't tell me. You never asked. But I thought we had everything in common. We do. We're both great tasting, except that I'm low in fat. Low in fat? Yeah. You say it like it's no big deal. Kellogg's Rice Krispie Squares have always been low in fat. Hey, now you know. Who'd have guessed? TSN is proud to present the 1996 World Cup of Hockey from Prague, Czech Republic. Brought to you by Molson Drive. This could be good. By Canadian Tire, Canada's hockey store. By the Alliance of Canada's only full-service telecommunications companies. Proud sponsors of Canada's Olympic team. And by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it. Ends October 31st. Welcome back to our World Hockey Control Studio. You know, the Czech Republic is a country that has only been in existence for three and a half years, but yet they were victorious at this year's World Hockey Championships. Ludek Vukac, their coach, was ecstatic with his team's performance. Does he have much control over this group, though? Because it's so much different well, than it's that a, team. It's a completely different realm than what he was dealing with at the World Championships. Ludy Bukac, Ludy Bukac has been around an awfully long time. He's very familiar. He's been in North America. He's apprenticed here in various capacities in North American hockey. So he's very familiar with the North American game and the pro mindset. Having said that, it's tough for any coach to have a lot of control over a team that's thrown together fairly haphazardly at the last minute, as this Czech team was, especially there was talk about Yarmar Yager coming in late and maybe wasn't going to come in at all, and then he had some sort of uh, throat problem. Uh, w w it's, n it's just not as cohesive a unit as the Czechs are used to going to at the World Championships. And it's the same as all, the same all the countries are now having to deal with that. The Swedes have done a great job of learning how to put a team together very quickly and deal with it, and the Czechs are probably the ones that have had the most difficulty with it. And you know what? You get a feeling that the Finns are also starting to grasp that. Uh, we're ready for the hockey game. Let's head out to Prague in the Czech Republic. Here are Gary Green and Paul Romanek. Gentlemen. An old, loud building packed to the rafters. If it were a cloth, it would be soaked with atmosphere. We're looking forward to a great one between the Czech Republic and Sweden. The Czech Republic looking to restore some pride after taking a battering from their fans and the media after a disgraceful performance in their first game in this series. Sweden, meanwhile, looking to pour it on and get set for a big game this weekend against Finland. 
But Roman Turek is hoping that he's got a lot of help in front of him in tonight's hockey game. But if this Czech team isn't ready tonight, Paul, I don't know when they would ever be ready because the fans have just been loud. They have been pumped for this hockey game outside the building. They were going crazy with their cheers. That has to put enthusiasm on the bench of the Czechs. Dan Meruelli is the referee. Shane Heyer and Gord Brossaker are on the lines. Roman Turek in goal for the Czech Republic. And Tommy Soderstrom getting the start for Sweet. If you missed it off the top, Tommy Salo, who played in game number one, has gone back to Stockholm with some kind of a stomach virus, stomach ailment. They wanted it to be checked out more closely. They thought, first of all, he may have had an appendix problem. When they got to the rink here this morning, he had difficulties. They sent him back to the hotel. Then from there, they put him right on a plane back to Stockholm. Sweden in blue, the Czech Republic in white, and we are underway. The building is packed. A lot of fans here from Sweden as well, and you will hear them respond if their team can get things rolling in this one. Matthias Nordstrom clearing it up along the board. There's Jaromir Jagr sliding it down into Swedish territory. Peter Nedved up there to forecheck. Here comes Jagr down into the corner. Jagr up there with Holik trying to knock it loose. Lidstrom got it up around the boards, but it's kept in. Here's Nedved out along that blue line, just tucks it down into the corner. Nedved up to forecheck. Kept it in the line. Holik battling away. And they will tie it up. Face-off coming up. Great start. Both teams under the blocks with some enthusiasm. Well, both teams, both coaches, realize how important the first six or seven minutes of this hockey game were. For Ludi Bukas, he knew that his hockey club had to instill some enthusiasm in this crowd. They had to get going, feel good about themselves and about this hockey game. For Kurt Lidstrom, behind the bench of the Swedish team, they not wanted to just survive the first six or seven minutes in this very loud building, but they wanted to be good and disciplined. And this is the first game in this tournament that is being played on the international size ice surface, 100 by 200. The rinks in both Stockholm and Helsinki had been adjusted to North American size, or NHL size. And the Czechs feel that could work to their advantage. Puck locked it up. Walking in. Long offside. So loud in this building, you can't even hear the whistles. Robert Long was offside, no question about that. Ludy Bushak doing some changing around. Bukash was making sure that he got the message across. You better be ready. He bent Straka, Kuchera, Peter Sikora, and then he took out a whole defensive pairing of Zeber and Vickakul. He put in Cabarel and Cadillac back at the point, and he put in a brand new line of Rahaska, Patera, and Vivoda. So lots of changes for the Czech. He's getting the message across. You may recall Martin Prohaska, who will be in there. He scored the game-winning goal against Canada for the gold medal at the World Championship. A new addition to the Swedish lineup in this game, Peter Popovich. And he will start out. Popovich clears it up ahead. Alfredson circling, looking for a bit of room. Reichel watching him. He clears it up ahead. Garfinlov goes after it. Number 29, up there for Sweet. Forsberg comes up. Number 21, Garfinlov battling up along the boards. Trying to knock that puck loose. Comes out to Alfredson. Knocked off of his stick. Fired in by Johansson. Rebound comes out. Forsberg goes after it. Popovich just floats one in. Turek will play that. And Rachinsky comes back. Rachinsky cuts in over the blue line. Popovich has it. Up to Alfredson. Alfredson mixing it up along the boards there with Yuri Schlager behind the play. Both teams changing up on the fly. Good pace to start this one. Baranek down into the corner. Baranek, number 42, giving up the puck. Marcus Naslin trying to come back up for Sweden along the boards. He was tied up. Hammerlick was going to go back and play it, but Turek played it all the way up to center. Now Turek just keeps it up there for Roman Hammerlin. Up for Baranek, went off his skate. Big traffic jam there at the blue line. Puck picked up by Dallin. 
Dowlin gets it up around, back of the net. He's knocked down, and a penalty coming up. It will be the first penalty of the hockey game. Alf Dowlin was hauled down in quest of that puck coming around back of the net. Looks like Roman Hammerlick is going to go to the penalty box. Dolan was dragged down. The Swedes get their opportunity on the power play. You can see that Dolan got in behind Hammerlick and then put the grab on him. Spent a little bit of time with Roman Hammerlick today and he felt that it was a big disappointment the way their hockey club played, but there was no question in his mind that they were just going to go out tonight and correct that problem. I talked to Martin Ruchinski before the hockey game. He felt the same thing. They were very upset at the way that they played. They should have prepared much better. They know it now. They didn't do much about it then. Yeah, but you brought up the good point that can you just turn it off and on like a switch? Well, there's one thing that on paper we know, we said that at the start of this tournament, that this Czech team is a pretty talented team with good NHL veteran experience. They'll answer that question, Paul. Here's Sundin, shooting! Rip that one in wide of the net. Forsberg going after it. Peter Nedved moving up after that puck shorthanded. Soderstrom out to play it out of harm's way. Yager up there knocks his man down. Nedved shooting. Soderstrom stopped it. And Yager almost converted on the rebound shorthanded. Here comes Sundin charging back up in over the blue line. It's knocked away from him. 127 left in the power play. Sweden with the man advantage. But the Czech Republic with the two good scoring chances. Yager's line heading off to the bench for a much needed rest. I don't think that Yager's in great shape yet, folks. Here comes Peter Forsberg. Up there with Garpenlaw. Back to the line. Lindstrom shooting it. He didn't miss by much with that blast. Fires another one and didn't get much on it. Here's Dallas. Dallas shoots. That stop. Rebound in front. Garpenlaw's after it. Scramble. And it's covered up. Lots of action around the net, and Keurig holds the fort with 54 seconds to go in the power play. Garpenlov and Cadillac doing some pushing and shoving, lots of intensity in this hockey game. Turek has been standing his ground. He's been concentrating, focusing in on that puck, and doing a real good job of ending up with it. He had to reach big time here, pull that puck right back in with his stick. Meanwhile, you can see that Garpenlov was battling for that puck. And then he took a little bit of a cross-check right there from Cadillac. Roman Turek, the gold medal goalie from the World Championship, he was voted the most valuable player in the tournament. He was outstanding for the Czech Republic. And he will have to be at least that in this tournament if the Czechs are to forge on to the final. Here's Sundin. Nylander dropped it down low. Forsberg was trying to work it in front. 37 seconds left in the power play. Nylander to Dowling, cuts it in front of the net. That was stopped by Turek, and the puck cleared down the ice. 27 seconds to go on the power play for Sweden. Here's Lidstrom. Up ahead to Dowling. Garpenlaw going for the front of the net. So is Nylander. Nylander takes it. Sundin to Nylander. Drops it back to Sundin. Shoot! Turek just firing out the leg. Here's Nylander. Dowling down low. Gets it down to him. Dowling in front of the net. Garpenlaw was charging through the slot but couldn't convert. Penalized player is back out there. The team's at even strength. Puck rolls out. Garpenlov fanned on that one. Lips from back at the blue line. Flips it up. And the Czechs will start back. Teams at even strength. Holy gets it up ahead to Nedved. Yager's out there too. This is the big triumvirate for the Czech Republic. Yuli couldn't pick it up. Prohashka skating back to touch it. No icing. Prohashka up to Cadillac. Yager streaking up there through center. They couldn't get the puck to him, though. Up around the boards. 
Prohaska was looking for it. Popovich moves up. He can't keep it in. 13.54 to go in the first period. 0-0 hockey game. Here's Yager. Shoot! Nedved was up there, so was Prohaska. Neither could get his stick on it. Uline starting back now for Sweet. And another penalty coming up. Uline was pulled down on the boards. He got tangled up with Yuri Slager. And we'll sort this out for you. 13.40 to go in the first. 0-0. you the greatest moments in hockey. Now, Canadian Tire brings the World Cup into your store. The best sale prices on brand name equipment like Coho, Bauer, Cooper, CCM, Sherwood, Easton, Tyson, and Jofa. Canadian Tire's World Cup of Hockey Sale. It's here, it's now, and it's real. Canadian Tire. Everyday low prices made better. NFL sizzle is headed your way. Go deep and go interactive as the Bills and the Giants get it on in their season opener. NFL excitement. Catch it on TSN. TSN is proud to present the 1996 World Cup of Hockey. The first period is brought to you by Gillette's $250,000 Triple Play Challenge at a retailer near you. Sweden going on the power play for the second time in this hockey game. Yuri Slager goes off. He gets called for hooking. He pulled Yulene down right along the boards. Neutral zone. You can't get, keep giving Sweden these type of opportunities. They're bound to score. A familiar set position for Tommy Soderstrom, the Swedish goaltender, back right into the net. Yeah, he loves to get back in that cage. Lidstrom moving it up ahead. Here comes Forsberg. Peter Forsberg moving up. Sundstrom out there as well. Sundin to Lidstrom. Shoot! And Curran got just enough of that as he kicked out the pad. Lidstrom has that red hot shot from the point. You see it in the NHL on the power play. And you see it internationally as well. Alfredson. Back to Sundin. Alfredson drops it down low. Forsberg looking in front, centers it. And big stop there by Kirik as he robbed Nicholas Sundstrom. I think Sundstrom thought he scored. There's a few in this building that thought he scored. Kirik knew he did. Good setup by the Swedes. They're looking for that low opportunity. You can see that Sundstrom got that puck and boy, he did the right thing with it. He tried to go right between the 5-0 on Turek. Turek had to scramble. A little unorthodox, his style, in making that save. But he got the job done. Turek very quick. And we've seen a couple of good examples of that in this game so far. 114 still to go in the power play for Sweden. 12.54 to go in the first period. 0-0 hockey game. Sweden winning its first game of the tournament. The Czech Republic losing its first game. Mentioned that I don't think Yarmir Yager is in the best of shape yet. That can be understood in many ways. Yager, as we mentioned in game number one with the Czechs, had his own team in early August. Team Yager, they played for charity, helping sick kids out. But it wasn't an intense schedule of games by any means. It was all for fun, as he mentioned. I don't think he's in great shape yet, but I'll tell you what. This is the type of game that Yager the Entertainer could really turn this crowd on. They love him here in this country, and for a lot of reasons. By far the biggest cheer when the players were introduced was for Yager. Nealander up after the puck. Here's Garfinlov dipping back there. You notice a little bit more room back of the net on the international size dice. A little bit more room to make the play, work the puck around. Forty-one seconds left in the power play. 
Garpenlaw tucking a pass up ahead to Nordstrom. Matthias Nordstrom down into the corner. Baranek watching him. They'll rough it up along the boards. Nordstrom trying to get it out. Back to the line now for Johansson. Nordstrom is open and moving in towards the goal. Nylander has it now. Nylander back to the line. Johansson shoots. That one stopped. And Dallin couldn't get his stick in the rebound. Eight seconds left in the power play. Soderstrom plays it up. The Czechs hurry in a change. It was a good shot on net from the point by Johansson, but there was no one in front to get the rebound and certainly not the screener try to tip that puck in. Penalized player back out there. Schlager tried to knock it back towards the front of the net. Schlager out of the box and right into the play. Nedved shoots this wide. Nedved and Yager out there now trying to spark something. Polik gets it along, back of the board, and it's cleared out. 11.05 to play in this opening period, 0-0 hockey game. Here comes Nilsson. Puck fired up around the boards by Tirich. Sundstrom trying to knock it down. You lean up there after it. And the puck cleared down the ice by the Czechs. Back there to tag it up, Matthias Nordstrom. Icing is called on the Czech Republic. 0-0 with 10.44 to play in the first period. Hi, I'm Sparky Anderson. Tune in to TSN Blue Jays telecast and watch for my on-the-ball features. Brought to you by Gillette's $250,000 Triple Play Challenge. Coming soon to a retailer near you. Face it, no other razor shaves closer or with more comfort than Gillette Sensor XL. No razor is better. and Canadian Tire money, you won't just save, you'll score. Canadian Tire, everyday low prices made better. Welcome back to the Sport Hall in Prague in the Czech Republic. 0-0. Zero, zero. Great battle going on in the first period. Sweden applying some pressure on a couple of power plays, but so far the Czechs and goaltender Roman Kirik looking solid. Puck tucked out in front there. Anderson couldn't get a stick on the pass. Lidstrom moves it up. Here comes Sundin. Good! Matt Sundin! with a great display of why he is a frontline centerman. Strength and acceleration, and he gets Sweden on the board. He can play any forward position. He has played the point in the power play, and he, folks, is definitely in shape. Top shape, so is this whole Sweden team. He just broke right in, flew right by Cadillac, and then put that puck right by Turek. Matt Sundin, who played a great game, game number one, He's doing the same here in game number two. He goes to the backhand and found the room by Turek. Sundin gets the goal at 9.42. Robert Long up there after it off the faceoff, but it's cleared back out. Sakura gets it up around the boards. Kelly Johansson hustling back after it. Fires it up around for Forsberg. Got by him. And Michael Sikora back to get it again. Up to Robert Long. Broken up there at the blue line. Popovich moves it up ahead. Forsberg spun around. Puck fire by Alfredson, but here's Garpenlaub. You don't see Kenny Johnson on the blue line tonight. He's a healthy scratch. He didn't play well in game one. Garpenlaub trying to break through there. The puck skipped by him and Ray Turek, who holds on to it. 
Janssen was pulled in place of Popovich, who was ready to play after a slight injury. Meanwhile, Ken Forsberg also did a little battling here, replacing Johansson with Nasla, Marcus Nasla in the lineup tonight. And Michael Nylander moving in to take the face off against Yuri Dopita. Slager fires it up around the board. Nylander after it, but it's skipped by him. So Sweden with the one to nothing lead. Matt Sundin scoring the goal. Nylander banks it back. That's whistled in by Turek. Johansson up after it along the boards. Roger Johansson trying to get that puck loose. It was worked towards the front, but nobody home for Sweden. Here's Baranek. Hammerlick. Tried to send it cross ice, knocked away. Naslin looking for it. And the Swedes will change him up in the goal. The Czechs will get in a couple changes as well. Hammerlick starts back. Hammerlick, long shot. Stopped by Soderstrom. Jager closing in after the rebound. Holik couldn't get there either. And back comes Sundin. Sundin up in over the blue line. Anderson is with him. And that's broken up. Holik with it. Anderson couldn't pick it up. Sundin up there for checking. Sundin really hopping in this game. Up there after that puck, but Holik picks it up. Holik gets it across to Yager. Yager in over the blue line, had to turn back. Holik went in offside. Kurt Lidstrom, the Finney's coach, eagerly watching the way that the Swedes perform tonight. And Ken Forsberg, the Swedish coach, hoping that'll be a great performance. A very interesting game coming up Sunday night at the Globe Arena. 7.40 to play in the first period. One to nothing, Sweden leading, and a goal from Matt Sundin. Hi, I'm Sparky Anderson. Tune in to TSN Blue Jays telecast and watch for my on-the-ball features. Brought to you by Gillette's $250,000 Triple Play Challenge. Coming soon to a retailer near you. Presenting Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue. For effective all-day protection, Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. for sure the best game we have seen over in this European pool. The first three lopsided. But this one so far, a couple of spirited teams really battling in front of a jam-packed and enthusiastic crowd. Here comes Yulene, cranking it up to the blue line. Yulene coming up, Bergfist is with him, drops it out to Bergfist. He lets it go back for Johansson. He got crossed up, but the Czechs will come back, lead pass, Viboda. Backhands it in, Soderstrom looks up, saw three Czech players coming in and decides to hang on. Some of the Czech players seem to be ailing a little bit on the bench. We saw Peter Nedved earlier being addressed on the bench. He seemed to have a problem right in his right leg. He had the ice pack on it just above his knee. Six to go in the first period. And whether or not Nedved is hurting, as you pointed out, we did see him with some ice, and they were putting some kind of a freezing ointment on his thigh as well. 
So we'll keep our eye on Peter Nedved during his next shift. Garpenlov up after the puck. Comes around, Lidstrom there at the blue line. Nordstrom. Clearing that puck in. Here comes Robert Long. Long clears it down into the corner. Reichel up after it. He'll pick it up, try to tuck it back in front for Long. Now Long's got it. Looking around, Rachinsky was in front of the goal, but that play kind of fizzles out. The puck cleared down the ice. Hammerlick has it. Hammerlick again. Baranek tapping it down. Here's Lidstrom. Naslin. Marcus Naslin up to the blue line. He spun around. Cadillac with it. 5.59 to play first period. 1 0. Sweden lead. Baranek up to the blue line. Very difficult for the Czechs to be able to penetrate that blue line on the Swedes. That was a two on four. Four Swedish players back there in the neutral zone at the blue line. Setting up a wall. And they tie it up along the boards. We'll get a face-off with 5.46 to go. What's the matter? You can't beat, uh, you can't beat four guys at once? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there are a few of the players on Czechoslovakia that are capable of it. There you see Robert Long also getting attended to. Yager seem to be hurting a little bit on the bench. And there you see it's Yager's, or I should say Long's, left arm is above the wrist. Tough battle out here tonight. Puck cleared up ahead. Marcus Naslund going after it. Naslund getting up to the corner. And he'll battle his way back towards the front of the net as Albaline shovels it in. Here's Nylander. Nylander dropping it off. Baranek. Long, weak shot. That's deflected away by Soderstrom. Baranek up along the board, trying to dig it back. He gets it to the corner for Dopita. Back in front. Baranek is out there. So is Sikora. And a penalty coming up. I don't know who's getting it there. They were both rolling and tussling around, both Naslin and Bach. It's a holding call. And the infraction taking place right in front of referee Dan Maroelli. It is sweet and will be penalized. Greatest player in international hockey history? What's the greatest goal? The greatest team? You tell us. Enter Canadian Tire's greatest moments in hockey contests, and you could win great hockey prizes, including the grand prize trip to Montreal, where you, nine of your friends, and hockey legends Paul Henderson and Slav Tretiak will watch Game 2 of the World Cup Hockey Finals in your own private luxury box. What will the next greatest moment in hockey be? Pick up your ballot at Canadian Tire before September 9th, and it could be yours. As a rule, engines develop good torque only when you push hard on the accelerator. But even at idle speed, a Dodge Magnum V8 can pull not only this loaded Ram 1500, but this loaded 2500 and a loaded 3500 as well. 15 tons. That's because every Ram truck has to pull much more than its own weight, even at idle speed. Dodge. Canada's truck stop. It is Marcus Naslin that's in the penalty box. They were both doing some hooking and holding obstruction. Holding was the call on Naslin. Bonk was the man that was being held. Czech Republic with his first power play of the hockey game and a chance to get on the scoreboard. Jager dropping it down low for Nedved. Nedved tried to get it to Halik. That's the threesome up front. Hammerlick is back at the blue line along with Yuri Slager. So coach Ludy Bukas getting the big guns out there right off the bat on this power play. And get a big rise out of this home crowd. Get them back into the game. Holik along the boards. Trying to work it loose in tandem with Nedved. Here's Yager. Yager checked along the boards. Good persistence by Sundin. Here comes Sundin. Yager watching him, but Sundin got it back. Good shot by Sundstrom. Sundin is on fire in this game so far. Here comes Yager back the other way. 
Yager looking, trying to center it in front. Sundstrom stopped it. Maybe John Sutter will kick that away after Schlager whistled it on goal. Here's Hammerlick. Good defensive play by Nicholas Sundstrom. He just anticipated that pass right in the high slot. Picked it off perfectly. 45 seconds left in the Czech power play. Long pass up there. Robert Long almost lurking in the weeds and coming out with the puck. But he couldn't catch up with it at the blue line without putting himself offside. 42 Nick seconds left in the power Nicholas play. Nicholas Sundstrom for the New York Rangers. Good hockey player. He reads the play well. Barry Smith was commenting on how well he's played. Tommy Soderstrom, of course, getting the start tonight because Tommy Sallow is out. But one Tommy to another. Tommy Soderstrom from the New York Islanders. Johan Hedberg is the backup goaltender. Remember, Tommy Soderstrom was the goaltender with five heart operations he had, and one of them this past year. Those operations to uh, correct an irregular heartbeat. And he left the game in October this year in the NHL schedule. Returned three weeks later. Checks in the power play. Puck tipped in front. And Soderstrom grabs onto that as Long tipped it on the way in. Boy, his heart may well have skipped a beat there. Close well, call. I don't think there was any question by the Swedish team that they were very confident in Tommy Soderstrom capabilities of coming in and filling that role. Gruchinski, as mentioned earlier, was ready for tonight's hockey game. He's got great speed and acceleration. He can really pick it up. He had an excellent year when he came across to the Montreal Canadiens. Gruchinski had 25 goals and 35 assists in just 56 games. Canadians expecting big things from him. Yeah, he was fourth in scoring on the Canadians after the trade. Eight seconds to go in the power play for the Czech Republic. 3.05 to go in this first period. One to nothing, Sweden leading on a goal from Matt Sundin. Robert Long moves it up there. Long takes the return feed, couldn't hang on to it. Johansson was watching him. Long trying to move it for Rachinski. Here's Long, here's a chance, and they can't get the shot away. Long got it in front to Dopita, but he missed fire. Nylander flying back the other way. Trying to work it up into the corner. He gets it there. Naslin looking for it. Naslin and Nylander along the board. Dallin is up there as well. Puck rolls. Johansson looking for it. He was checked by Rachinski. And meanwhile, down in the ice, back in the corner, is an injured Czech player. Some pushing and shoving going on. When the whistle finally blew, you can see that the team doctor and trainer are taking quite a time to get out there. I'm still not sure who that player was. Now there you see. He's being attended to. Yuri Dupita, it seems, went down and is now being helped up. They didn't consult with him a great deal. Just kind of lifted him right back up. Dragging him off. Yuri Dupita just missed a scoring chance at one end and heading back into the check zone. Seems to be favoring that right leg. Dupita went in, took the body, and he goes down awkwardly. Watch it from this angle. Watch Dupita as he goes into the boards, he falls backwards. And it appears that the right leg may have just buckled a little unusually. And there you can see he is having that right leg addressed. Tapita was one of the Czech players that had some zips in game number one. He played in the last three consecutive world championships and of course was on the gold medal winning team this past year. He led his Czech club team in scoring during the regular season. Two twenty-two to play in this first period. One to nothing is the score. Sweden is leading the Czech Republic. Here's Lidstrom, Jager, Nedved, and Holik out there for the Czech Republic. 
their best offensive line. Lidstrom getting it up ahead. That was Anderson trying to come in. That's broken up. Matthias Nordstrom. Here's Yager with it. Has Nedved to his right. And Yager stripped of the puck there at the line by Anderson coming back the other way. Sundin is with him. So is Sundstrom. Sundstrom will give chase into the corner. And Yager starts back. Polite comes in over the blue line. Offside. Called on the Czech Republic. But every time that the Czech gets the puck, it seems, in the neutral zone and are looking for the offensive zone, they're also looking at four blue sweaters. Twice on that shift. First of all, two on four, led by Yager. Then it was three on four. The Swedes are very disciplined at their defensive play and pride themselves in it. Well, the neutral zone trap that you've heard so much about the last few years being employed in the NHL actually uh, has its roots in Sweden. Swedish teams have always been very good defensively, and Barry Smith has brought the Swedish defensive style, the left wing lock to Detroit, where it was very effective for the Red Wings. Prohaska cutting towards the front of the net. Ruchinski trying to get it out to him. Vivoda up there as well. Vivoda working along the boards. Prohaska comes in. Prohaska tapping it down for Vivoda. Vivoda with it. Prohaska going to the front of the net. Passes behind him. Cabrini shoots. He had moved in from the blue line and had trouble controlling the puck. Ruchinski whacking at it. Less than a minute to go in the first period. I enjoy watching the Swedish team play, Paul. In their own end zone, they have great confidence in each other. They play as a team. They back end each other up, but they do their job. Forsberg gets it across. Garpenlov in front to Forsberg, and it backs away from him. 34 seconds left in the period. Checks break in. Ruchinski fired one. That wobbles into the corner. Reichel up there after it. Here comes Ruchinski up, throwing his weight around. Reichel's trying to get it in front. He's battling away. Ruchinski looking for Long in front of the net. 15 seconds left. Ruchinski along the board. He and Uline get tied up and the puck comes out. And that's just lofted back in with five seconds to go. The Czechs have answered the question for one period, Paul. They're ready to play. Have they got enough for period number two? The Swedes with the only goal in the first period. Matt Sundin gets it at 9.42. Sweden won. The Czech Republic nothing after one. We send you now back to control. World Cup of Hockey live at the intermission is brought to you by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it. Ends October 31st. Now this is a little more like it. This is without a doubt the best period of hockey that we've seen from the European pool so far. No question. The Czechs have come to play today and the Swedes are playing their kind of game. Gary and Paul talked about it. The neutral zone trap. There's always three guys back. Very responsible in their own end. And if they can get a two-goal lead, they will definitely try to sit on it. That is their style of play. But keep in mind, the Czechs can score goals in bunches, and they're showing a lot more spirit, a lot more heart today than they did against Finland. Well, we expect Canada will show a lot of heart tonight as they take on their arch rivals, the Russians. When we come back, we will talk Team Canada. This is the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. The country up here is what you want to do. You can't fake your freedom. And you know you can't fake smooth. Well, I'm going up the country, baby, don't you want to go? Yes, I'm going up the country, baby, don't you want to go? Well, yes, I'm going somewhere where I've never been before. There is a girl being born in America, and somebody will tell her she is beautiful, and somebody will tell her she is strong. Somebody will tell her she's precious. And somebody will say she is tough. There's a girl being born in America. And someone will give her a doll. And someone will give her a ball. And then someone will give her a chance.
this election year, the Democrats want him. I am so flattered. The Republicans need him. I will do whatever it takes. Because he's one man who always puts the party first. <laughs> Walt Disney Pictures presents Sinbad. I ain't doing nothing, but looks good. In the movie, critics are calling a laugh-out-loud film for the whole family. First Kid starts Friday, August 30th at a theater near you. It was a 5-5 hockey game, and uh, we, uh, their defenseman pinched in the face-off in our end. And uh, we got the puck. Uh, Dale Howardchuck, I believe, knocked it by the guy. And we ended up getting a three-on-one. And the whole play was created by Murphy uh, not stopping. He kept going to the net, and he took the defenseman to the net. And as he took the defenseman to the net, Mario, with enough hockey sense, you know, dropped out of the play a little bit to get himself in the open. And, uh, I just threw it to Mario, and he threw it in the top shelf. The goalie had no chance. Uh, so Murphy made a great play, Mario made a very smart play and dropping back a little bit. For me, it was just a matter of getting him the puck and it was in the net. Without question, it is our greatest source of national pride. An entire nation has been waiting for this tonight. It is Russia and Canada. Yeah, everybody's looking forward to it. And I know that the Canadian players are looking forward to it because the essence of Canadian hockey is that we like to play games. You can see it. You get six, seven, eight, nine-year-old kids and you bring them together for at the beginning of the season and they're having practices or training camp or tryouts or whatever it happens to be and it doesn't take very long before the first kid always says, we're going to play a game coach, we're going to, we're going to scrimmage today, we're going to play a game and that's where this Canadian team is at. The big Canadian players are no different than the little Canadian players. They want to get the show on the road. A lot of people have said this training camp's too short and everything else but I'm sure that the Canadian players right now, their attitude is bring it on, let's get it going, let's, let's get the, uh, the real thing going and put the uh, practice time behind us. And the rosters have been secured. Yesterday we were talking about the Canadian forwards in particular. Uh, brought up the point of Keith Primo. Is he going to get some playing time? And it looks as though he will. Well, based on the lines that they were running through in practice yesterday, yes, he will. Keith Primo was moved onto the left side with Winross. Brennan Shanahan was moved from the left side over to the right side. And Claude Lemieux, if you see him down at the bottom right now, appears to be the odd man out in terms of the first four lines that might start for Canada tonight. Although Glenn Sather is liable to make any changes between now and game time. Trevor Linden's been moved from the Sack and Brindamore line, flip flop with Theo Fleury there, so it's Dom Foods, Gretzky, and Linden. At least that's the way it was in practice yesterday. The Graves, Messier, Verbeek, sort of a quasi checking offensive line, has been together through most of the time. And then you've got Brindamore and Sackick and Fleury. Steve Eisen, of course, is right now injured with that knee sprain or knee strain and will not play in the round robin portion of the tournament. Uh, there's lots of movement there for Glenn Sather. He could put Lemieux in at any spot and lots of juggling around, but those are the lines they went with yesterday and a good bet to start the game tonight. And Ron Francis, uh, noticeable by his absence. Unfortunately, Francis is out with injury. You mentioned the 26 players have been selected and Glenn Sather will interject them at his discretion. What about the blue line? Well, you've got to go with six defensemen in tonight's game. And again, this is just a guess on my part, but I've got to believe that Scott Stevens, Paul Coffey, Scott Niedermeyer, Rob Blake, and Eric Desjardins, if they are all healthy and ready to go, will be five of the six starters. Then it will be up to Glenn Sather to decide, is he going to go with Ed Jovanovski? Is he going to go with Adam Foote? Is he going to go with Lyle Odeline? I can't imagine that Sylvain Cote, just having come to the team yesterday, is going to suit up tonight my money is, if he's healthy, Adam Foot number 52, being the sixth defenseman, although I wouldn't be surprised if he drove an Oski. I think he'll be one of those two guys in the sixth spot, assuming all the other guys are healthy. Ed Jovanovski has had a definite physical presence in between the pipes. We still don't know at this point in time who the starter is going to be. Uh, the number one man, it appears, though, seems to be Martin Brodeur. All the speculation, media speculation anyways, is leaning towards Martin Brodeur to start tonight's game. But again, Glenn Sather's a guy that is often full of surprises. And we shouldn't be surprised if Curtis Joseph comes out. But right now, we do know that Bill Ranford is penciled in as the number three guy. And Brodeur and Joseph will battle it out for that number one spot with the expectation is that will be Brodeur. Net mining is a source of depth for Team Canada. Brodeur or Joseph, Team Canada will be fine. Brendan Shanahan now joins us from Vancouver. And Brendan, how does this team compare to the Canada Cup team that you played on in 1991. Well, I, and I think in 91, uh, you know, for me personally, there was a lot of older, more experienced players. I think it was 
second youngest guy in the team next to Eric. And, um, you know, the team had a lot of experience. This team here, we, we've got a mixture of, of both. We've got, uh, on one half of the team, we've got a lot of guys that have played in several Canada Cups, and this is their first World Cup. And then we've got a lot of other guys that this is their first international experience at the uh, professional level. So uh, it's kind of a mixture, of, you know, you've, we've got both ends of the spectrum, whereas in the last one, I think we, we kind of had one, one large group from one uh, generation. Brennan, it's Bob McKenzie. Uh, you mentioned you and Eric in 1991. Now you're playing on a line together with him. How's that been? Stay out of his way. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, Eric likes to get in on the four check, and he's the centerman, so he's got pretty much free reign of the ice. And I just do my best to read off of him. If Eric uh, decides uh, he's going to play the left side or swing over to the right side, he's such a physical force that uh, I think it's his winger's job job to read off of him because he creates so much on the ice you don't want to limit him uh, and say just go up and down the middle so when Eric starts rolling along you just uh, you get out of the way you let him wreck you know wreak some habit and then uh, some habit and havoc <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean I'm scared even thinking about it and you just uh, get in the open for him and basically you read off of him because he's definitely a guy that when he's out on the ice he has a presence and the other team are a little bit more uh, nervous than when he's not. But then the defense has been banged up, had a lots of bumps and bruises, and they've had to make some changes back there. There have been some nagging injuries up front, including yourself. Is this team healthy enough to compete? I think so. Uh, we've had a bit of bad luck. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how long your training camp is when you've got sore ribs or take a uh, puck off the foot or, you know, uh, some, a situation like Al McInnes where he had a, you know, a viral infection. Uh, that's just bad luck. You, that's something that is out of your control. But I think that that's why we've we've got the depth that we do. That's why we brought extra guys to camp. Guys like Eddie Jovanowski uh, have stepped in and, and really made a contribution. We've got a lot of players on this team that have always been ready um, should they get the call. Uh, I believe we picked up Sylvain Cote uh, today as well. So we've got a lot of players that are ready. Uh, nobody at this point, uh, you know, was ever expecting. Uh, that uh, they would be shut out of the tournament or not allowed to play. Everybody came to camp with the attitude that they were going to be in the lineup. Brendan, when you take a look at your division, uh, you've got yourselves, Russia, the United States. You are the three favorites going in. Uh, how would you rank them or seed them heading into the tournament? Well, I, you probably would assume that we are the favorites. Uh, over there in Europe, though, it seems to me that Finland's playing uh, very well. Uh, they're calling themselves the best team they've ever assembled. I think Sweden is saying the same thing about their team. So we can't count those guys out. Uh, sometimes you, 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 know, you, you look what's in your own backyard. And, you know, in this uh, particular side of the tournament, this, this group, uh, definitely it is the United States, Russia, and ourselves that have the, the strongest probably reputations as hockey powers, but you never know in a tournament like this. Each game is, is single elimination once we get down to the playoff round. Uh, I've heard a lot of players compare this to the seventh game of the Stanley Cup Final, each and every game. So that's what kind of pressure we're under, and that's what kind of pressure every team's going to face. So you never know. One bad penalty, uh, you know, a goaltender getting hot. These are all things that are going to play uh, key roles in all of the games. Brendan, thanks very much, and good luck against Russia and the rest of the tournament. Thanks, Dutch. So tonight, they will go head-to-head. -head. The last time they met was a 4-4 draw. That was an exhibition match, and it was intense in itself. Tonight, they'll take it up another notch or two. You know what? I love the line. Could you imagine going out there to dress against Lindros Primo and Brendan Shanahan? Collectively, they weigh about 660 pounds together. Their average height is about 6'3 three and 3 quarters. Uh, that's tough. Some big boys on that line. Big boys, no chubby guys on that line, but some real big guys on that line. And that's going to be a big part of the game plan for Team Canada is establishing physical superiority over the Russians. They do have it. If you look at the lineup, the Russian, especially the Russian defensemen, are going to have a very tough time in front of the net and down low. And the beauty of the primo Lindros shanahan line is how well they cycle the puck. And it's going to be very important for Canada early on, especially for their big guys, not just that line, but Mark Messier, Adam Graves, Pat Verbeek, and the guys that aren't even that big are, are physical hockey players is to establish that physical game, especially down low and in front of the net, and start staking out their territory. And Canada has a decided advantage when it comes to that physical play. I can't see any nation matching up with that front three at all. Uh, we will take a short break here. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. World Cup of Hockey live at the intermission is brought to you by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it.
ends October 31st. question does your breath feel really fresh fresh enough what do you mean fresh is your breath fresh enough to kiss someone well I brush not as confident as you thought huh if you want really fresh breath you want scope well brushing cleans teeth scope plus brushing kills million four bacteria than brushing alone and leaves your whole mouth feeling clean and fresh <sighs> scope fresh is kissably fresh and that's the best kind of fresh your breath can be for our play of the period. There was only one goal scored in that first period, and it was a dandy, though. Mance Sundin walks in. He goes five-hole on Roman Turek. That's his second of the tournament, the first of the game. It came at the 9.42 mark. A brilliant move by Sundin. All speed, dangles in, and then goes to the backhander to make it one to nothing. That's our play of the period. It's brought to you by New Mono, Ultra Sealant, and Gillette. Their $250,000 triple play challenge. We'll take a short break and watch the World Cup of Hockey here on the Sports Network. Hi, I'm Sparky Anderson. Tune in to TSN's Blue Jays telecast and watch for my on-the-ball features. Brought to you by Gillette's $250,000 triple play challenge. Coming soon to a retailer near you. Presenting Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue for effective all-day protection. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. Some of the world's best tasting water can be found in your home. The Brita water filtration pitcher has a special Brita filter that reduces chlorine taste and eliminates over 90% of lead in tap water, leaving you with great tasting water that's only as far as your kitchen. Brita, water the way nature intended. This first period scoring summary is brought to you by Gillette $250,000 Triple Play Challenge. Matt Sundin with the lone goal. He makes it one to nothing for Sweden. As for the shots on net, even. Sweden with nine. The Czech Republic with nine. Really good 20 minutes of hockey. For their thoughts, here's Paul and Gary. There we go. That's more like it. That's the kind of hockey we were expecting to see in this World Cup tournament. A great first period and lots of credit to the Czech Republic answering the bell, uh, proving something to some of their fans after a disgraceful performance in the first game of this tournament for them. Well, the Czechs were up for the challenge. This crowd's up for the challenge tonight. The Czech team came out and they at least had intensity out there. They were working together as a hockey club. However, They've got two more periods to play, and I just wonder about their conditioning right now. The Swedes, I have no question about their conditioning. I have no questions about their defensive capabilities and their team play right now. 
it's going to be a tough battle for the Czechs to try to win this hockey game well, still. Uh, you touched on it uh, late in the period. I mean, this Swedish team, the more you watch them, the more you are impressed. In some ways, they look to be in mid-season form. Well, they're a very well-conditioned hockey club, and they have got a challenge right now, and they know the best way to be able to win is to win as a team and to play a team system. And Ken Forsberg has got them playing that way. And only one goal in that first period, a beauty by Matt Sundin. one nothing after one. Hopefully that energy will be there in the second period as well. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it's the second period of play here on TSN. What's it like? Kind of hard to describe. Come on, you gotta tell us. Okay, we're all great tasting. Yeah. But I'm low in fat. Low in fat must be nice. Kellogg's Rice Krispie Squares have always been low in fat. Hey, now you know. You're so lucky. 500 miles, 366 laps on a track the drivers claim is too tough to take. Catch the Southern 500 from Darlington Raceway. NASCAR on track Sunday on TSN. The crowd has been a definite factor in that first period of play. You have to love the whistles and the atmosphere, the enthusiasm. Let's see if they can carry it through. Here are Paul Romanak and Gary Green. Gentlemen. One to nothing after one period. Matt Sundin with the goal. And a very spirited first period of play. The Swedish team right now look as though even before the puck is dropped that they know what their mission is for this second period. Team defense wins hockey games as far as they're concerned and especially when you've got the lead. Swedes had a couple of power play chances in that first period. The Czechs had one. Neither team coming up with a power play goal. And the Czechs are going to start things off with Yarmir Yager out there in the ice. Every time he touches the puck, you just hear a tremendous rise from the crowd. It's going to be Yager, Holik, and Nedved out there to start things off for the Czech Republic in this second period. Rowan Hammer look back to pick it up. Tucks through up to watch him. Here's Nedved. Nedved being watched by Sundin, who had just a great first period for Sweet. Sundstrom tucks it up and ahead. Anderson, shoot, he ripped that one and did not miss by much. Big shot from Michael Anderson. What a bullet of a drive. He was looking for that short side. He wasn't far off. Here's Sundstrom. Slotting it back there for Lidstrom. He moves it up. Puck just bounced into the corner by Nordstrom, and the Swedes will change him up in the go as Roman Hammerlick comes back out to center. Tried to hit Yager with a B there, but... Icing is called on the Czech Republic. Just underway in the second period, 19.07 to go, and it is one to nothing, Sweden on top. Well, all of the officials on the ice tonight are in their own equipment. They have all of their own equipment. Kerry Fraser, by the way, who we'll see tomorrow night in Garmisch, Germany, got his equipment back the other day. And finally, the supervisor in charge of officials, Brian Lewis, got his luggage today, Paul. He feels like a brand new man tonight here supervising this game. Yeah, and we, and we finally got a close game, so everything's starting to fall into <laughs> place to as it should. Exactly. The, it, officials it's have their, uh, the officials have their luggage. Puck fired by Johansson. Score! <laughs> Kelly Johansson right off the faceoff. And Turek got a piece of it, but just a piece. Face off their key. Good 
We haven't talked a lot about this man, the son of the Swedish coach, Kent Forsberg. He went to the net. The big drive by Johansson. Kelly Johansson's got an excellent shot. That puck did just trickle by Turek. Giving the Swedes a 2-0 lead and an even more comfortable means of playing defense. Puck flicked down into the corner. Garpenlov up there after it along with Forsberg. Alfredson gets it back. Johansson tried to power another one through. Alfredson tied up. Garpenlov up there after it. Slides it for Forsberg. Alfredson along the boards for Sweden. Johansson at the line. Chips it up into the corner. Here's Forsberg. And the puck comes out. Kelly Johansson with it. Garpenlov coming up the middle. The puck knocked away from him. Prohashka got his glove on it. Now Daniel Alfredson will clear it in and head to the bench. Sweet making some changes on the go. Caverly clearing it down into Swedish territory. And trying to get away there was Naslin. No penalty called. Naslin was pulled down as he went after the puck. Here's Hammerlin. Nealander clearing it back in. Hammerlin back to pick it up. 17.40 to go in the second period. 2-0 Sweden leading. Kelly Johansson scoring the second goal for Sweden at the 57-second mark of the second period. Right off a face-off on a shot that just got by Roman Turek. Here's Baranek for the Czech Republic. Works it up around to Slager. Albaline knocks that down. Radek Bob trying to get around him. Soderstrom plays it into the corner. And play whistle down with 17-13 to go in this second period. The question for the Czech team right now is who's their leader on this hockey club? They're down by a couple of goals. The Swedes are well in control defensively, offensively. Who's the player on the bench right now for the Czechs that's going to get this hockey club going? You would think that it's going to be Aramir Jager. He's the man with the talent. He's the guy that likes to put on the show. I'm not sure that that's the case, though. Not in this tournament right now. I think that perhaps a player like Gruczynski has the capabilities of coming out and really turning it on right now, but they are lacking in that leadership department. They don't have two or three real key guys that are going to take the ball right now and run with it. Well, and you also talked about conditioning. If this pace keeps up the way it did in the first period, I've got to think the Swedes would be able to outlast the Czech team simply because they're in better shape. They are better conditioned at this stage of the tournament. But look at Jager. He gets it out in front. And Holik fires it wide. Nedved trying to center it. Play whistle down. And a penalty coming up. It is going to go against the Czech Republic. 2-0 Sweden leading here in the second period of power play when we come back. The World Cup brings you the greatest moments in hockey. Now, Canadian Tire brings the World Cup into your store. The best sale prices on brand name equipment like Coho, Bauer, Cooper, CCM, Sherwood, Easton, Titan, and Jopa. Canadian Tire's World Cup of Hockey Sale. It's here, it's now, and it's real. Canadian Tire. Everyday low prices made better. When your knee is feeling the got to stick, mono comes out of the trick. Mono. When it comes for the best, the choice is clear. There won't be anything like it for years. Mono. It works in the sun. It works in your shower. You wash up with water. It cures fast, it won't shrink or crack, and it's completely paintable. Mono Ultra! Get the mono! Yarmir Yager in the penalty box calls for interference, much to the chagrin of the pro Czech crowd. When we just talked about Yager and who's the leader on this hockey club, Yager looked a little frustrated when he took that penalty. Now we'll see how the Swedes react. If they were to score in this power play, that might make for a very fragile Czech team. Hey, 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 
Yeah, a team whose collective confidence you could slowly see making its way back in that first period. We'll see how mentally tough they are. Forsberg comes back to Lidstrom, gets it over Sundin, smokes one. He fired that one for the top shelf. And a nice grab by Kierig. And a little pushing and shoving after the whistle. Well, Sundin was right there. He was looking for the screen that he flexed whenever he could. And he just stood his ground. Turek, on the other hand, had what he was looking for, and that was the puck. Turek's played pretty well in his hockey game. Down by a couple of goals, but you can't really fault Turek on any of them. How do you like Sundin back there at the point of the power play? Hey, you can put Matt Sundin any place but goal, and I'd be pretty happy out there to have him as a, as a coach. Sundin's a smart hockey player. He reads the play really well. He's got great skill levels. Good shot. What more can you ask of a hockey player? Put him any place. Well, he's at the left point for this power play. Plays back there with another power play veteran, Nicholas Lidstrom, in the Swedish lineup. 1.30 to go on the man advantage for Sweden. The Swedes are up by a score of 2-0. Alfredson just chipping it up down into the corner. Polik gets back there. Has to move quickly, but he gets it ahead. Here comes Nedved. Short-handed. Nedved works that puck around, eats up some time, and finally gives it up. Lidstrom, slickly to center. Works it up ahead, Alfredson gets it there, Sundin closing in, Alfredson knocks it down. Up around to Sundin. Sundin along the boards. Here's Lidstrom. Forsberg going towards the front of the net. Lidstrom pounds it on goal. Rebound comes out. Alfredson bearing down on it. He's knocked to the ice. Slager almost got it up ahead to Peter Nedved. He was scot-free if he had the puck. Sundin comes in. Drops it back. Forsberg works it up. Sundin chops at it. That's knocked away. Hammer look after it in the corner. Puck up along the board. Lidstrom there at the blue line. 27 seconds to go in the power play. On the first scoring opportunity the Swedes had on that power play, Nicholas Sundstrom was doing an excellent job of standing in front of Turek. In fact, I wasn't quite sure, did Turek make that save or did it hit Sundstrom? Skarpenlov after it up along the boards. Kicks it back to the blue line. Dallin is down low. Garpenlov trying to work it to him. Broken up by Brahmir Cadillac. And Cadillac gets it down the ice. And that will do it for the power play. Yager back out there. And he'll get right into the center of things, no doubt. The Czech Republic down 2-0. They need a goal to spark something. Here's Yager. He's just the man who can do it. Gets it up ahead to Long. Climbing his way down into the corner. Yager after it, and play is called. A penalty coming up, and it's another call against the Czechs, and the ice is littered with beer cans and drink cups. They are not happy at all with the officiating of Dan Meroelli. Hey, how could you not make that call? That was, a, that was a penalty all the way around. But to be littering the ice with everything from bottles right now to cans is ludicrous. Somebody's gonna get hurt out there. These aren't plastic rats they're throwing. These are cans. Tin cans and bottles. Ridiculous. You be the judge, folks. You don't think that was a penalty? If that's not obstruction, I don't know what these fans are used to. Robert Long couldn't have been guiltier. And these fans, for some reason, reacted violently by throwing all of this debris on the ice. The Czech Republic has only had one power play chance in this hockey game. The penalty calls have definitely favored Sweet so far. But yeah, that, that last example, how could Dan Baruelli not call that? Well, look at this though, I mean, would you want to be a player out there with all of those cans? Either team. These fans aren't thinking well when they do things like that. I thought they were much better hockey fans than that here in Czechoslovakia. Although, you know what? I'm guessing that most of the beer cans were empty. Yeah. So what? 
Look at that. You get hit with one of those, and that takes a player's eye and his career right out. I don't see a lot of ushers in the stands here doing much about it. In fact, I'm straining to see one. My conclusion is they're not here. <laughs> they're at the gate where we saw them in this building. Thank you, Sherlock. Yeah. Well, it could get ugly, though. Slava Leonard, the former Calgary Flames assistant coach. If the Swedes were to score on this power play opportunity, look out. So another power play chance for Sweden. Nursing a 2-0 lead. And that's Cash just clearing it down into Swedish territory. The Swedes will set up. Jager and Nedved out there as penalty killers. So that's an offensive threat, even shorthanded. Garpenlob sliding it down to the corner. Nylander trying to get in front. Dallin out there as well. That was Garpenlob who was dumped. Michael Sikora carries it out to center. Yager there to pick it up. Sikora was in offside. He lost his footing and wasn't able to get out before Yager carried the puck in. Still 1.28 to go on the power play. Yager's looked a little bit frustrated. He hasn't been able to do the things that he's used to being able to do in the National Hockey League. He was in mid-season form right now. He'd be taking advantage of this big ice surface. He's not. In game number one, Yager had great difficulties of being able to beat defensemen on the outside. That's not Yarmir Yager. He's one talented hockey player. Here comes Lidstrom. Lidstrom getting it across. Nealander just carries it in. Nealander gets it down into the corner. Nealander will take it back. Bit of traffic down in front of Hasek. Nealander back to Lidstrom. Not able to handle that pass. And the puck comes out with 55 seconds to go on the power play. Braddock Bopp getting tied up there with Nealander. Meanwhile, the puck comes in. Sundin. Trying to battle his way up. He was checked. Garpenlov going after it for Sweden. But Halik holds him off. And just eating up time. Yuri Slager takes a little spin. Gets it to Hammerluck. Back to Slager. 30 seconds left in the power play as the puck is cleared down the ice. Alf Dolan, the nine-year veteran of the National Hockey League, is sure a valuable man still out there in the ice in the National Hockey League and certainly for Team Sweden. In over the blue line, Sundin is on the fly. Gives off to Alfredson. Back to Sundin. Back to the line. Johansson shoots. That's knocked down on the way through. Here's Forsberg. Peter Forsberg has Sundstrom in front. They work it around. Comes back to Sundin. Down low to Forsberg. Trying to center it in front. Puck comes back to Sundin. Penalized player back out there. Sweden still with the pressure on. And Curran will hang on to it. Alfredson fired it in there on goal. 12-17 to play in the second period. Sweden up 2-0. When you don't want the night to end, you have to pace yourself. Claire. Maintain a positive attitude. A tattoo. Nice black boots. And be prepared for anything. Get to know the DJ. Dry brew. 5.5% alcohol. Wholesome dry. This could be good.
second period is brought to you by new Mono Ultra Sealant, the best sealant for all your caulking needs. Here's Johansson with it. Johansson looking for a couple of options. And chooses the one on the left wing, but the pass doesn't click. And icing is called. Yulene wasn't able to wheel that pass in. The Czechs right now are going to have to find that speed, that breakaway speed to the neutral zone. If they're forced to dump it in, they've got lots of room there with the international ice surface. They've got to use that speed then to be able to get possession of that puck down deep. They've got to find ways of testing Tommy Soderstrom. Kelly Johansson has one of the goals for Sweden in this game. Ulf Dallum, the veteran, has looked solid as well. There's this check line that was inserted for the game tonight. Patera. Prohaska and Diboda. Dallin trying to come away off the draw. Naslin with it as well. Johansson clears it back there. Popovich. This line for the Czechs helped this hockey club win the gold medal at the World Championships. It's their coach is hoping that the same will occur from them tonight. Here's Viboda, moves it up ahead. Patera almost knocked that down. Viboda gives chase along the boards. Prohaska over there as well. The puck cleared out. It actually hit a player on the check bench, so we get a whistle with 11-12 to go in the second period. Bukas inserted that line because he felt that he needed to send a message, but also he needed some unity on this team. He needed a line out there that played on the gold-winning team in this year's World Championship that could bring some cohesiveness to this Czech team that were far from that in game number one. Yeah, when you compare them to the Russian team and look at the veteran leadership on that club, Makarov, Larianov, there really is nobody of that stature in Czech hockey playing on this team. No sort of living legend for the players to look up to. Well, you very seldom win any major tournament or event if the inmates are running the asylum. And referring to Larianov and Makarov as living legends is not overstating it when you're talking about hockey in Russia. Those two idolized and looked up to by players in that system. Puck dropped off of the line. Caberly couldn't get the shot in towards the net. Puck steered in over the blue line. Alfredson wired that one well wide. Swedes will get in a couple of changes. Czechs will do the same. Puck just flipped out to center. Albaline fires it back in for Sweden. Matt Sundin up there after it. Sundin trying to scoop it out towards the front of the net. Yager's out there. He knocks it up ahead to Patera. Yager in over the blue line. Patera going for the front of the net. Nedved out there too. Here's Patera back of the goal. Nedved comes up to help out. 
Tried to center it. Younger. Shoot. Couldn't get the shot on that. Into the corner. Lindstrom chops at it. And play is whistled down with 9.59 to go. That's more along the lines of what the Techs have got to do. They've got to get that puck in deep, and then they've got to concentrate on winning the battle. Winning the battles in the corners and in front of the net. When they start doing that, they'll start getting some scoring opportunities. The Swedish team also has great capabilities, Paul, of being able to take the tempo away from you. Start to slow the game down. Locking the neutral zone. Making the easy play in the defensive zone. That can take the motivation, the tempo level, away from the opposition. Czechs have got to fight against that. Yager up there after it. Nedved to Holik is the other forward. Sundin trying to come away for Sweet. Gets it up ahead. In over the blue line now. Anderson fired that up, and it's grabbed and held by Turek. Turek just taking the safe and easy road. No blaming him for that. Peter Nedved, who's pretty good on faceoffs, is heading to the bench, it appears. Turk. Look how well he's playing the angles, and he's way out the top of his crease to cut the angle down, and then just makes the easy glove save. And there is no way with the Swedes going to the net well that he could throw that puck away. That's something that the Swedes did very well in game number one. They went to the net. They were looking for their one weakness they felt they had, and that was their finishing off ability. In game one, that was not a problem. Patero is looking for that puck. Garpenlov on his knees, works to the corner. Forsberg up there with him. Here's Netskash. Stanislav Netskash, long pass up ahead to Radic Bach. Look at the Swedes in the neutral zone. Try to make a pass, just try it. Patero failed to make one there. Alfredson up after the puck. Here's Garpenlov. Back around to Alfredson. Back for Garpenlov. Alfredson going towards the front of the net. Garpenlov came out himself and tried to tuck it in. Didn't quite have enough room on the short side. And this is Baranek coming back. Up there with Radic Bach. Baranek up along the boards. Bach in there battling away. Baranek was circling in the corner as well, but the rush broke it up. And both teams will seize the opportunity to make a couple of changes. Caverly throws it up ahead to Reichel. Reichel gets it in over the blue line. Rachinski trying to get that shot on goal. Rachinski in the corner. He's knocked down. A penalty coming up against Sweet. And when we come back, the Czech Republic will crank it up on the power play with 8.24 to go in the second. captures perfect pizza taste in a pocket ready for that first bite now's the time for your favorite snack perfect pizza taste in a crust that's baked not fried so there's no leaks no mess just taste pizza pockets just perfect pizza taste Jar that puck loose. 
Out there with Albaline. Here's Rachinski. Working back in the net. Gets it to Robert Long. Reichel chopping at it. Rachinski, number 25, up along the boards. And it's clear down the ice. You see that Bukas came back with Rachinski here. I think he's really looking at him to get the spark for this hockey club. 124 to go on the power play for the Czech Republic. Hammerlick hammers it in. Johansson gets there first, rings it around the boards, and down the ice, 115 to go on the power play. Jager's line's ready to roll. Here's Hammerlick. Drops it back. Jager's been sitting on the bench with both legs over on the ice for the last 20 seconds. He's over the boards and into the action. Jager throwing it back to Nedved. It comes up for Hammerlick. Shoot! Rising shot. Rose a little too quickly. And the puck is tapped past Flager. And out to center. 45 seconds left in the power play. Here's Hammerlick. Flager back to pick it up. Here comes Nedved. Yager coming up to center with him on the left-hand side. Holik is there, too. Here comes Holik. Forsberg, hot on his heels. Gave him a bump. Slager at the blue line. Nedved. Back up for Yager. Yager back up for Slager. Spinning, waiting, passing. Yager can't get a shot away. He'll give Chase in there. Ten seconds left in the power play. And the Swedes, it appears, will weather the storm. Good play by Nordstrom. He was able to get that puck out. The Czechs worked a lot yesterday in practice on their power play. Who cares? Wish they had a lot longer. Holik lost the puck there. The penalized player is back on. The team's all at even strength. Score! Jonas Bergqvist! Jonas Bergqvist put Sweden up by a score of three to nothing with a heartbreaking goal for the Czech. Bergqvist really played well in game number one. Great spark, but watch this. This is just a killer for the Czech. Bergqvist picked the short side and he picked it perfectly. Watch, he's got his head up. He had to fight to get possession of that puck. He threaded the needle right between the legs of Roman Hammerlick, who was backing in, and watch Turek. He didn't have a lot of room, that is Bergqvist, to find that spot. But short side he did. And that was not a good one on Turek. In terms of games played internationally, Bergqvist is the veteran on this Swedish team, and he gets a big goal right there, coming right on the heels of a Czech power play. The Czechs fail to score, can't turn the momentum around, and then the Swedes give themselves just a little bit more with that goal. Jonas Bergqvist getting it at 13.44. And it is 3-0 for the three crowns. Camberley in over the blue line for the Czech Republic. Up around back of the net, Patera gets it back along the boards for Vivoda. Vivoda and Patera trying to work it around. Prahashka out there as well. Camberley back after it. And Prohaska gets tangled up. The puck rolls out in front. And Nylander almost jumping on that loose puck. Here's Tommy Abilene with it for Sweden. 5.08 to play in the period. We are in period number two, and Sweden is leading 3 0. Moranic trying to go for the front of the net. Dallin throws that ahead. Nets cash. Across for Sakura. Nylander chopped it away from him. Here's Holik, up to Bonk. And Radic Bonk clearing it in. Nets Cash trying to get free up there. Baranek as well. Sakura after it. Nets Cash is the one man back. But the two on one disappears. Backhand shot right on by Nealander, but that was stopped by Hatton. Checks are out of gas. Pardon me, that was stopped by Turek. They wish Hatton had been here to make that save. Here's Alfredson. Alfredson back up and into the play. He was tied up there by Bonk and not able to get the shot away. Here comes Baranek, winding it over the blue line. Has Bonk going for the net. Baranek shoots. Sutter's from stop that.
And the rebound cleared out. Great back checking by Alfredson. Forsberg up after it. He bumped into Turek. Hammerlick just clearing it out to center. It bounces past Nicholas Lidstrom. Roshinsky moving up there. Roshinsky up along the boards. Nice that one on goal, and it's grabbed and held by Tommy Soderstrom. 3.43 to play in this second period. Sweden is leading 3-0. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey. When you need a feeling that's got the stick, Mono Ultra does the trick. Mono Ultra. When it comes with the best, the choice is clear. There won't be anything like it for years. Mono Ultra. It works in the sun. It works in your shower. You wash up with water and take it an hour. Whatever the kitchen surface, nothing sticks to the job like Mono Ultra. And it's mildew proof in the bathroom. Mono Ultra. You didn't tell me. He never asked. But I thought we had everything in common. We do. We're both great tasting, except that I'm low in fat. Low in fat? Yeah. You say it like it's no big deal. Kellogg's Rice Krispie Squares have always been low in fat. Hey, now you know. Who'd have guessed? The 12th round of the 1996 Formula One World Championship revs up at the Circuito Monza. Don't miss the roar of the engines at the Italian Grand Prix, live Sunday, September 8th. Formula One excitement on TSN. Jonas Bergqvist, the latest goal scorer for Sweden. He got it at 13.44. I mentioned him being a veteran. He's one of only 11 players with 200 or more games with the national team. And in case you were wondering, if you're a fan of Swedish hockey trivia, the all-time games played leader for the national team is Thomas Rundqvist who was actually at one time property of the Montreal Canadiens and is now playing in Austria along with Ben Gustafsson. Here's Rachinsky. Gets it back to the blue line. Pounded in there by Sikora but couldn't hit the mark. Rachinsky up after it. Long trying to chase it down. Anderson clearing it out at center. Hammerlick intercepting that. Three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the second period. It is 3-0 Sweden leading. Up to the line, Sundin coming down the left side with that puck. Sundin looking in front. Sandstrom's out there. Tried to get it out in front, but the pass didn't get to him. This is Reichel. In over the blue line. Reichel up there with Rachinsky. Good defensive coverage by Robert Long, though, back in his own end zone. He was back in deep helping out and picked that pass off as the Swedes tried to center it. Cadillac out to center. Bergqvist gave him a bump. Nedved couldn't hang on to it. Kemmerly. Bouncing that in. The two-hopper fielded expertly by Soderstrom. Here comes Bergqvist. Looked as though he was going for the short side again, but that one was blocked by Kemmerly. Holikin along the boards in his own end. He was tied up. Bergqvist grappling away down there trying to come up with it here's Cadillac two minutes and ten seconds to play in the second period this is Peter Nedved for the Czech Republic Black up at the line empty play by Alfredson he shoots and bounced that one wide those are the type of plays where Peter Nedved makes them that as a coach you'd like to just put him on the end of the bench for the rest of the game Trying to beat a man coming out of his own end zone and coughs it up. Here's Alfredson up back of the net. Alfredson takes the scenic route around. Gets it back up ahead there for Nylander. Can't get it in front. Checks are kind of reverting to the form they did in game number one, Paul, when they were trying to do it all by themselves. That's why they're trying to get back into this hockey game. Individual moves. That won't work. That was gloved ahead, so play whistled down with 1.29 to go in the second period. What's the old song? You gotta have heart. You gotta have heart. You gotta have team togetherness. But you're not gonna beat this Swedish hockey club by going end-to-end -end on any one individual player. I don't care whether you're Yarmir Yager or Peter Nedved. You're not gonna do it. You've got to work together as a hockey club out there right now, and the Czechs aren't doing a good job of it. Talked about the good defensive effort by a guy like Robert Long. Here's a guy that's playing for the Los Angeles Kings. He looks like a hockey player. He's six foot two. He's 190 pounds. He can control the puck. He's got good skill levels. He only scored six goals last year.
year in the National Hockey League. He had a great world championship, though, for the Czechoslovakian team, helping them win the gold. You keep thinking that he's going to finally break out offensively. We didn't see it in game one, and still in game two, we're waiting. Patera moving up there after number 10 for the Czech Republic. Soderstrom knocking that one away. 110 to play here in period number two. Turek out there to park it. Vivoda. Bouncing it up off of the boards, but Tara couldn't catch up to it. Less than a minute to go in the period. Puck centered in front. Here's Sundin. And he couldn't cradle it to get the shot away. Czechs just can't catch this Swedish team. The Swedes' breakout right now is not very good. Their counterattack has been poor, they're slow, and they're not outskating the Swedes at all. The uh, Swedes, even when they do get caught in Paul, are able to get back in the neutral zone before the Czechs can do much with it. Offside pass there. They're the only other team that we've seen with comparable speed in this European pool so far, uh, clearly the Finns, who are 2-0, and o, which, again, just paints a picture for what should be a great matchup on Sunday. And the Swedes were trying not to look ahead to that game, but it was very difficult. When I talked to Coach Kent Forsberg before the game, he knew the importance, of course, of this hockey game. He knew the importance of winning it. So they go in on even sides against Finland on a very big game on Sunday night. It will be a big game in this tournament because it will probably be for first place in the European pool, but it is much, much bigger than that. There is a tremendous hockey rivalry between Sweden and Finland. A rivalry in general. Athletics, academics, everything. Puck bounced up off the boards. Johansson picks it up. Kelly Johansson. Bergvist deflecting that out. Hammerlick skating over and the fans whistling their displeasure with the home team after two periods. The Czechs are trailing sweet by a score of three to nothing. A tall order for the Czech Republic in the third period. We will see if they can answer it. World Cup of Hockey live at the intermission is brought to you by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it. Ends October 31st. Well, that is true. In fact, the Czech Republic has shown a little more heart and a little more intensity, but they just can't seem to penetrate the Swedish defense. No, they're having a tough time. They're losing all the one-on-one -on -one battles. You know, I, I was looking at that period, and both goals that were scored by Sweden, maybe I could say Roman Turk should have had one or the other, or maybe both. And yet, it's too easy to go ahead and blame a goaltender in that situation, especially a young goaltender like Turk, who's going to go and join the Dallas Stars this year. If you saw the power play that the Czechs had with about eight minutes to go in the period, it, there was about five one-on-one -on -one battles down low, and they've got an outman situation, and I counted every single time the Swedes won the battle. And then all of a sudden, two Swedes collapsed down low onto a puck, took it away from a Czech guy in the corner, and fired the puck down the ice. That's supposed to be a power play. It's supposed to be the Czechs that have two men on the puck, and it was the other way around. So you can clearly see that in the one-on-one -on -one battles, in terms of the heart, the desire, uh, just the physical superiority, the Swedes have it all over the Czechs in this game. Uh, they're playing on an international ice surface in front of the hometown crowd. We thought Jarmer Jager would be out there dangling. That's well, not been the case. It's really difficult to understand what the problem is, whether it's a lack of preparation time, a lack of cohesion. Uh, but obviously, all is not well with this Czech hockey team. But they have shown a lot more spark and a lot more effort. But the, as Gary pointed out, their conditioning doesn't seem to be as good. Their strength doesn't seem to be as good. And they're just uh, outclassed in this game against a, a very good, solid Swedish team. Boy, isn't that the truth? And as soon as they uh, miss their opportunity in the power play, Jonas Bergfist scores, makes it three to nothing. Uh, Sweden definitely in control. We'll take a break. We're back with more in a moment. The country up here is what you want to do. You can't fake your freedom. And you know you can't fake smooth. Well, I'm going up the country, baby, don't you want to go? Yes, I'm going up the country, baby, don't you want to go? Well, yes, I'm going somewhere where I've never been before. Music looks like a lot of fun when you're playing, and it is. It's a business, though. You've got to make ends meet. 
I make five, six hundred calls a month. The Advantage program is definitely something that's come into play in a big way. When you're out on the road, you're working 24 hours a day. Checking back with the office, the voicemail. The discounts for me have come in around 30%. It's a sizable chunk of money. It's a long, slow process to an overnight success. Advantage, providing solutions for business. Joining us now from Vancouver is Team Canada defenseman Ed Jovanovski. And Ed, the first question I wanted to ask you was, you were named as an alternate to this team. All of a sudden, Al McInnes goes down due to injury. Is that when it hit you you'd be playing against the world's best? Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, it's unfortunate to see, uh, first of all, Al McInnes uh, go out ailing. I mean, everything he's done for, uh, in the National Hockey League and his international experience, it's unfortunate to see him leave. But that's when uh, chances have become... Uh, good for myself to step in and, and play with the best uh, best in the world and I'm looking at it as a great opportunity for myself to gain experience at this level and, and also for the upcoming season. And it's Bob McKenzie. You handed out a couple of thundering checks against the Russians in that pre-tournament game. Has Glenn Sather told you to be as physically as possible in this tournament? No, I think I, I know that myself. I mean, that's uh, part of my game that I can't let slip away. And, and I, uh, I play the, my best hockey when I'm playing physical. So it's something that I got to keep on doing and uh, not let slip away. But he, uh, he mentioned it and he said, uh, don't go looking for it. When it's there, uh, take the hit, but uh, don't go looking for it. Eddie, you've got limited international experience, but you did play in the 1995 World Junior Championship. How much did that help you? Well, uh, playing at that level, I mean, uh, obviously it's not as quick as this, uh, but uh, it, it made me get the feel of it anyway. But uh, playing with all the, the best players, I mean, you always have to pick up your game a few notches. And, you know, it's, it's going to be great for myself playing against all these players. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. Ed, a lot of people have said that Canada's blue line is perhaps their Achilles heel. Do you agree with that assessment, or do you think that's being overly harsh? Well, there, there's a lot of talk about our defense, uh, but it's, uh, I mean, the players in the dressing room know how our, how our D can play, and, and that's all, I think that's all that matters, and, you know, uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show on the ice how we play. Thanks very much, Ed, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Canada and Russia tonight. Love the way Ed Jovanovski plays the game. Love the way Joe Sackett plays the game. One exhibition match, it was a 4-4 draw in Calgary, and we saw a lot of intensity in that hockey game. Uh, it will be very, very intense tonight. Now, both teams had to declare their 26-man rosters yesterday. Russia did the same as Canada. Russia, though, without Pavel Bure. Yeah, at first they thought with that bruised kidney that he was going to be able to come back and maybe play in some of the playoff games, a semifinal or a final, but uh, they got the word that he couldn't do that. So they stroked him off their lineup, put Valerie Zalapukin of the New Jersey Devils onto their lineup. And contrary to popular belief, this does not destroy or break up the number one line, offensive line, for the Russian team because Bure had not been playing with Sergei Fedorov and Alexander McGillney. In fact, Sergei Nemchinov had been playing a lot on the left side with those guys. So it won't break up that unit, but uh, nevertheless, it still leaves a hole in the Russian lineup. Yeah, it does leave somewhat of a small hole, but like our Canadian forwards, they have a lot of depth. The Russians have a lot of depth up front. They're still very, very talented. All extremely talented. Uh, you know, Alexei Yashin, a number of other players that come along, uh, they can really do the job. Now, the, the forward lines, we're probably guessing here just a little bit. We do know that Nemchinov is playing with Fedorov and McGillney. Uh, Yashin on the left side with Larinov and Kozlov is something they tried. I'm not so sure that they'll do that, but that is an option for them. If they don't play Yashin on the left side with Larinov and Kozlov, Kovalenko could move up, play the right side, and Kozlov, number 13, could move over onto the left side. Uh, that would allow them to put Jamnov and Yashin back as their centers. But Nikolishin is a guy to we'll keep an eye on in this tournament. A good young player from the Hartford Whalers that's really underrated. And Kovalenko is also getting a lot of ice time in a lot of different situations. Valerie Bure, Berezin may be the extra guys in a number of situations. 
and uh, Alexei Kovalev is a guy that can do some damage. We, we talked about Canada's blue line, and uh, I don't know if it's being harshly criticized. What about Russia's blue line? Well, this is a very dynamic offensive group. As you go down the list, Sergei Zubov, Darius Kasparaitis, Vladimir Malakov, Oleg Verdosky, uh, Sergei Gonchar, Dmitry Yuskevich, Alexei Zhitnik, all six of those guys, or seven of them, can rush the puck, can jump in, have good shots from the point, so it's a very dangerous offensive unit. Karpatsov and Fedosov are more on the stay-at-home types, but also, there's no question that the big boys for Canada, Primo, Linross, Shanahan, uh, Linden, the list goes on and on, Messier, they can take advantage of this group in front of the net and down low if they get cycling the puck and play that Canadian physical style of game. Well, if the Canadians are in front of the net minders, they're going to have a lot <laughs> Countless hockey memories and more to come. They meet again tonight in Vancouver, and Wayne Gretzky talks about it right here. That's hockey. With Dave Hodge. Welcome, World Cup fans. The World Cup is about to add the dimension of games in North America, and what better way to do that than to pit Canada against Russia? As I said last night, this game isn't nearly as important as the next one would be. Both teams do figure to survive the opening round, after all, but the tournament will probably take on a certain tone based on what happens tonight at GM Place in Vancouver. A fast start for Canada will remove doubts about this team, managed and coached by Glenn Sather. A slow start will create some. If anyone playing tonight has seen it all before where international hockey is concerned, it is surely Wayne Gretzky who appeared in four Canada Cups and was the scoring leader each time. Wayne, here you go again one more time. And after all the other times getting ready for the Russians, uh, any different this time? <laughs> well, it, it, exactly. I mean, we're really pumped up for tonight's game and all the players are uh, really excited about it. I think that each and every guy has worked very hard um, in the off season and in this training camp to be ready for this this hockey game tonight. Uh, we realize that uh, we're in for a tough game, and uh, we're ready to go. Are there any concerns about your own readiness uh, or the team's? No, not really. We have a pretty uh, pretty good group of guys. We have uh, uh, a veteran team, yet mixed with a lot of young players who are eager to uh, to be successful in this tournament. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, first game jitter, so to speak, which is only natural, and uh, uh, yet we're, we're ready to go with a very positive about our hockey club. The concern of others is that uh, you haven't had enough time to prepare or you've uh, not done enough with the time that was available. Would you change anything about the way you've handled the schedule? No, not really. I, I think that, um, you know, it's a pretty equal uh, situation uh, in this tournament in that uh, all the teams started training around August 12th or 13th. Uh, we've had a little bit of a, a grinding travel schedule, uh, probably trying to help sell the game and promote hockey throughout North America. Um, but all in all, uh, I would say we've worked very hard. Um, Glenn has uh, picked spots to give the guys some days off. Uh, and I think rest at this point in, in people's uh, uh, careers is just as important as the physical fitness side of things. Uh, so we feel we've uh, prepared hard, and we feel we're on equal bounds with every other team. We're ready to play. What about the team you've got versus the team you might have had if all players asked had been willing to participate? Well, you know, obviously when uh, Mario doesn't come because of his situation and probably got the most legitimate reason for not being here, you don't replace Mario Lemieux. He's the best player in the game today. So, you know, that's obviously... a uh, a little bit of a blow to our hockey club, to say the least. But then um, the other guys, you know, they've made their decisions not to be here. And a uh, couple injuries. Uh, I, I will say that, you know, Al McGinnis is a very underrated player, and I've had an opportunity to play in two tournaments here with him, and I've played a little bit with him in the league. Uh, you don't replace a guy like an Al McGinnis, but I think Jovanovski has stepped in and done a fine job for our hockey team, and he's going to be a great player. So. Um, we're, we're happy with the guys we have. Uh, we added a guy like Vincent Danfus because of injuries and Graves because of injuries. Both those guys look right in place and uh, feel 
we feel that they're both going to contribute a big part uh, to this hockey team's success. So we're, we're, uh, we're happy with our team. Uh, you can't look at uh, the negatives of, of players who didn't show up. Uh, we have to uh, be positive and uh, be happy with the team we have. Were you involved in trying to get Ray Bork to come? I did talk to him once. Uh, the players asked me if I would call him, um, and I, I did give him a call. You know, he's made his decision not to be here, and, and that's fine. I mean, nobody has to come to this. That's their own decision. Uh, as players, we just feel that this is a tremendous experience, and we feel that, uh, you know, get a chance to play your country is something that uh, is a great honor. Did you at any time consider not playing? Not at all. Um, you know, each and every day I would wake up in, uh, early in the morning in California and had to work out with my wife and, and the trainer each and every morning. And I was skating two or three times a week in July. So, I mean, my focus was on this tournament. And, and for me, I'm thrilled to be here one more time. Uh, probably, and I'm sure it is my last time to, to play in this kind of a tournament. So to get a chance to play with guys like, uh, you know, Lindros and, and uh, you know, guys like Martin Brodeur and players of that nature, it's, to me it's a thrill and honor. And I, I, as I said many times, I feel privileged to be here. What about thinking back to your days in Edmonton? Is uh, Gretzky, Messier, Coffey, Sather together again uh, part of the appeal for you? Or does it mean more to the people who want to write and talk about it? Well, it means just as much to us. I mean, uh, I'd have to be uh, lying if I said I wasn't thrilled to uh, hear Glenn was going to be the general manager of this hockey club. I talked to him periodically during the year about the, uh, the tournament and uh, um, <laughs> maybe put a bug in his ear to coach this hockey team. But, uh, w you know, to play with Paul again and to play with Mark, uh, be with Glenn behind the bench, I think he's been uh, very good to the players in this tournament. He's been hard, yet he's been fair. And he's probably as excited as anyone. He's uh, a little bit nervous and yet edgy, but uh, extremely confident. So it's fun to be back with this group. And have you had any time to think ahead to a training camp with the Rangers? Well, not really. That's been the hard part because I, I got a family of three and we have to find a place to live and, and uh, put our kids in school and get organized for training camp. And I really haven't had that opportunity to think about any of that. And, and uh, this has been such a uh, time consuming. And, and uh, I've been trying to, to mentally focus on just this tournament and get ready for this uh, whole situation. And I really haven't even had an opportunity to, to uh, deal with the New York situation. So once this tournament's over, um, I can focus on that. Now, once this tournament's over, the hockey season starts, we might say. Yeah. Wayne, uh, thank you. All Good right. luck. All right. Thanks, David. So long, Canada-Russia goes 5 o'clock Pacific time and then three games on Saturday and Canada has to fly to Philadelphia to get the United States involved in this tournament for the first time. <laughs> Keeping an eye on other NHL developments today, Vancouver was officially awarded the 1998 NHL All-Star Game. A lot of players on the ice tonight will be there for that. And it seemed like this took three years, but Mark Crawford, the coach of the Stanley Cup winning Colorado Avalanche, has signed a new deal there for three years. Up next, World Cup action from Europe today. Another win for Sweden. Bauer. Here are the first two clues in trying to guess the identity of tonight's player under the helmet. This player won two gold medals at the World Junior Hockey Championship. And in 1991, he was named Canadian Major Junior Player of the Year. The World Cup's European pool winds up to be as simple as it was supposed to be after Sweden's 3-0 win over the Czech Republic in Prague today. First place of the European pool will go to the winner of Sunday's game between Sweden and Finland. The loser gets second place and the survivor of Saturday's game between winless Germany and winless Czech Republic finishes third. Sweden's win today was far too easy to suit the fans in Prague, but just fine as far as the Swedes were concerned. Matt Sundin's first goal was able to stand up as the winner, and he stands by with TSN's Paul Romanov. Yeah, thanks, Dave. With the uh, much uh, taller Matt Sundin, uh, tall expectations for this team heading into the tournament, and so far you're meeting them. Uh, I mean, you look like a well-oiled machine out there. Yeah, we came out uh, today. We were a little scared of this game. Uh, the Czech lost big in Finland, and uh, we knew coming in here it was going to be a 
a pretty a tough hockey game for us, but uh, we played solid and, and uh, we played as a team at four strong lines and Tommy played great in that for us and uh, we came, came through. Yeah, how much concern was there? Uh, you lost Tommy Sallow, had to go back to Stockholm to be checked out. Uh, did you talk a lot about the goaltending situation heading in? I know you have a lot of confidence yeah. in Tommy Soderstrom, but still, you must have thought about it. Obviously, we didn't find find out until uh, this uh, morning, and uh, I think everybody was feeling pretty confident anyway. We know uh, Tommy and Tommy are, are buddies in from New York, and they play together. And uh, we know that uh, Soderstrom can step in any time and, and play a great game, just like he did tonight. Matt, uh, for you, uh, I think probably your best game of the tournament so far of the two. Uh, you look to be in great shape. How hard did you train uh, looking ahead to this tournament? Where have you been working on it all summer? Well. I've been, I think I'm a little stronger, uh, I've been gaining a little bit of weight, uh, I've been uh, putting on a few pounds and uh, I've been working out hard, I'm looking forward to this season, it's a, it's a big year for me and, and uh, you know, this has been a good start so far. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, if you're looking ahead to the season and thinking in terms of this being a really good starting point for you. Absolutely, the, the World Cup uh, feels like a, a good springboard to jump into the new season and obviously uh, the way it ended last year with the Leafs. Uh, this year, it's, it's, uh, hopefully, it's going to be a lot better. So uh, I'm really seeing the whole tournament as, as a big uh, springboard for the next year. We're all looking forward. Hockey fans are to that game on Sunday against Finland. Try as best you can to explain to uh, to a North American the intensity of the rivalry with Finland. Why is it so intense? You know, it's it's tough. Uh, the only the best way I can explain it is uh, if. Uh, a uh, French Canadian team meeting in an English uh, English team or a team from Ontario in a in a huge final. Uh, that's probably the best way to, to explain it. It's a, uh, I mean Finland coming in now to Stockholm and and coming to the beat. They won the World Championship in there the other the other year and uh, we definitely do not want to lose against the Finns in, in Stockholm. Matt, uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Matt Sundin of uh, the victorious Swedish team Sweden will play for first place in the European pool of the game coming up against Finland on Sunday. Let's head back now to Dave Hodge and that's hockey. Thank you, Paul. Once a week on that's hockey, we'll ask a question and uh, bring you the best of the answers we get from any and all parts of the hockey world. After much discussion yesterday and today with uh, Wayne Gretzky about who's playing and who's not playing, this week's question is, why did you decide to play in the World Cup, and did you ever consider not playing? I think initially when they announced the, uh, the roster, yeah, I did have some thoughts, but that, I think during February or March, I don't even know when it was, during the, you know, the course of a long season, the last thing you're thinking about is playing hockey in the summer. But a few weeks after the season ends, you're kind of sitting around and, uh, started thinking about it and thinking about the event and uh, just sort of the decision you know seemed natural just you have to go and get the opportunity to go you have to go I guess you always think about it but you know the way you look at it someday you might not be asked so you want to take every opportunity you can and uh, you never know what's going to be your last one so I'm going to accept every offer I get and uh, and uh, take advantage of it only because of my contract situation did I ever consider saying no, but uh, I just worked too hard all summer uh, to get to this point. I knew everyone would be taking it serious, and I think, uh, I think it's great. It's going to be the best hockey ever played. I, sa I said yes right away because it was my dream, and uh, I want to be in the team with all these great guys, and uh, um, it's very important to us because we're all Russians and we want to play all together and uh, have some fun and especially win some hockey games. I think a player should be excited to play in this and if he's not, you know, I think most of the guys also feel that, uh, you know, there's a great deal of pride in Canadian hockey and, you know, we've been supported through minor hockey or all the way up. This is a way of putting something back into it as well, but most of all the underlying tone is uh, pride and I think most of the players that are, I'd say every player that is in this tournament from every country wants to win just for pride alone. Some of the answers we got to the question of the week. Some more of the show coming up. You're watching That's Hockey on TSN. Two more clues under the helmet. He was chosen first overall in 1991 in the NHL entry draft, and he won the Hart Trophy in 1995. That's hockey. With one eye on the World Cup, we continue to use the other eye to look at NHL happenings tonight, the summertime events in the Northeast Division and how they affect a group dominated last season by Pittsburgh. 
there's no secret as to the strength of the Pittsburgh Penguins. They can score, and they score in bunches. Lemieux, Jager, Francis. The 362 Penguin goals last season were three dozen more than their nearest rival. The trouble is, they can't keep the puck out of their own net. Only six teams, just six, allowed more goals than Pittsburgh did last year. So with that in mind, power play specialist Sergei Zubov was shipped off to Dallas in exchange for the much bigger and tougher blue liner, Kevin Hatcher. None of this matters, though, until number 66 decides whether or not he will return to Pittsburgh for another year. It must have been a long summer for the Montreal Canadiens. One season after missing the playoffs entirely, they blew a 2-0 first-round series against the Rangers with four straight losses, three of them in their brand-new Molson Center. However, general manager Réjean Houle hasn't pressed the panic button. The Canadiens have made just one significant move during the offseason, reacquiring former 50-goal scorer Stéphane Richet in exchange for Lyle Odelai. With Richet, Pierre Turgeon and Vince Damfus together, could a new French connection line now be in the offing? The big question in Boston is can he or can't he? Cam Neely's health, as it seems to be every year at this time, is front and center in Bean Towner's minds. Despite another season full of problems with his legs, Neely still potted 26 goals in just 49 games a year ago. The Bruins have tried to add some grit up front in the event that Neely is incapacitated. Troy Millette, Sheldon Kennedy, Jeff Odgers are all muckers who can score the occasional goal as well. Odgers came over in a deal that sent Ally Afredi packing to San Jose. Two key losses for the Bruins are Sean McEachern and penalty-killing specialist Dave Reed. They combined for 47 goals a year ago. The only significant changes to the Buffalo Sabres, their arena, and their uniforms. The new Marie Midland Center should be a welcome sight for the Sabres and their fans alike, as should the very marketable red and black jerseys. Buffalo management must have been smiling when goaltender Dominic Hasek opted out of the World Cup in favor of a couple of weeks of rest. The Sabres will once again live and die with the Dominator. No significant moves in Hartford, and no move out of Hartford either. As usual, there was talk that the Whalers could soon be leaving Connecticut, but the team is still there, and for the time being at least. And it's very much the same team that finished 10th in the conference a year ago. The young Whalers will still only go as far as Brendan Shanahan takes them. And then there are the Ottawa Senators. Oh, those Senators. 18 wins, a league low, 191 goals scored, another 26th finish overall. Things can only get better. If anything, though, Ottawa looks to be set in goal. Damian Rhodes showed last year he's ready to be the number one guy after a trade with the Maple Leafs, and Ron Tugnut is a new and able backup. But once again, the pressure will fall on the Senators' three young stars, Alexandre Digg, Redick Bonk, and Alexi Yashin. They will be the key factors as Ottawa tries to climb out of the eastern basement. So it looks like the Canadiens may have what it takes to succeed in the Northeast. But those Penguins, you never know, they still may have 66 ways to try and stop it. Thank you to Vic Router. Off the Wall featuring Jim Ralph is next. Here's a final look at tonight's Under the Helmet Clues. Under the Helmet tonight is Philadelphia Flyers captain Eric Lindros. Contract negotiations were a bit of a snake for me as well. I guess after my last year of junior hockey, I was a little overconfident. I went into Bob Pulford's office as general manager, general manager in Chicago, and I said, Mr. Pulford, in all honesty, I, I think you should be paying me what you're paying Tony Esposito. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pulford said, Jimmy, he said, let's, let's be honest with each other. He said, you're only half as good as Tony Esposito. Fortunately, I stood up and held out my hand and said, Mr. Pulford, you've got yourself a deal. Pay me half of what you pay Tony Esposito. Jim Ralph, speaking of uh, dealing with the bosses, uh, Glenn Sather comes to that uncomfortable point tonight where he has to tell some players that uh, they won't be needed. They won't be big, big name players who aren't accustomed to sitting in the press box. Were you ever told uh, you would not be playing? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Dave, yeah, the last two or three years were probably like that. Actually, the, the last uh, two years when I uh, 
uh, I had sort of retired out of Chicago for a year, uh, and then when I finally got a, in touch with them the next summer to tell them, uh, <laughs> I ended up signing with Toronto. They said, come back, you'd be our third goaltender in the minors. I ended up uh, uh, doing the radio in the press box, and uh, so I don't think there's any shame in it at all. And I was, you know, not making quite four million a year to do it, but uh, twenty-seven to five, uh, the first wife's very happy. Did they usually <laughs> say that you were injured, though? So, so or, or did they want it made very clear that you were healthy and they <laughs> didn't want to use you? No, they said, uh, you know, at the time, Jeff Reese and Timmy Bernhardt were the goal centers, and they said, look, if uh, somebody slips into a coma, you, you know, get the stuff on. But they'd usually tell me the morning skate. Uh, well, actually, early on, they used to tell me in the morning skate. After a while, it was sort of a no-brainer. I didn't have to ask and uh, showed up about 10 to 7 before game time. How would you like to be Sater calling for the fourth line? Would that be the one centered by Gretzky or Messier or Lindros or Sackett? And, and then you've got Eiserman Hurd still. I mean, yeah. that's where it's sort of easy for Sater to be able to sit uh, Steve Eiserman out. I mean, it, uh, I, st I still think Canada's strength is up front. Uh, defensively in goaltending. I mean, I still don't see how you could say, gee, this is where they're weak, because uh, they're still some of the top players in the games, but uh, you're right, I mean, it's fourth line things, throw them together, and I, I think Brett Hall said it best, he said, this is like an all-star game. Uh, let's just hope uh, it's not the 14 to 10 scores we see. No, I don't think so. Um, speaking of scores that uh, have been lopsided, though, we're going to have to say goodbye to one of Germany uh, or the Czech Republic on, on the weekend. Uh, have there, is there a nice way to, to do that? And have there been too many teams here? Should we have uh, fewer than eight teams? Well, I, I mean, I think so. I don't know how, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like planning a wedding that just gets a little out of hand. you got cousins you don't really know are going to uh, come and probably not bring a gift. And, and it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's at the point now where, I mean, the, the Czech Republic, I think, have been a big disappointment. I mean, they've still got some pretty big-name players. And if they can't get by Germany, I, the way it stands right now, uh, I believe Germany gets a tie in the rent. Did you so, see uh, how their fans uh, said goodbye to them today <laughs> in uh, in Prague? This was beer cans littering the ice. They're, they watch NHL hockey. There is no doubt. They saw the Stanley well, Cup final. They liked those games in Miami. Well, they didn't have any rats yeah. around, I guess. Well, I mean, it's, it's a war torn, uh, war torn country right now, and <laughs> I guess they can't afford the plastic <laughs> rats. And I, you know, we shouldn't chastise them for it. But uh, you know, I, I thought that worked pretty well. I thought. Uh, did, did a lot for hockey. That was it. 3 nothing for Sweden over the Czech Republic, and they'll have to uh, beat Germany or indeed say goodbye to the tournament. We say goodbye to Jim Ralph till tomorrow and get to the point right after this. give you a clean sheet. What will you write? Will your words be long and graceful? Or short and sweet? Will it be poetry? Or just plain English? something to say. Say it now. For soon, always too soon, my sheet will be filled. And this chapter will end, sure as the next will begin, with a clean sheet. New authors and a million possibilities. It's the key to a best of seven playoff series. It's even more important when one loss beyond the first round can spell the end. And this is a tournament that gives Canada the edge up front, the United States the edge on defense, and uh, Russia perhaps in the area of explosiveness. There is no perceived advantage in goal, though. If it comes down to Martin Brodeur versus Mike Richter versus Nikolai Habibulin, I'd be hard-pressed to pick one. All I know is that all three can be very hot, but they also happen to be goalies who can really struggle if they're not at their best. And I wouldn't be so sure that another goalie won't emerge in another week on any of the three leading contenders. There's never a shortage of comments when Canada meets Russia, so we'd like to hear your thoughts before or after the game. You can email us at that's hockey at tsn.ca or reach us through either of our fax numbers. And the more traditional route, send us a letter. We'd like to read it.
I'm Dave Hodge. That's hockey.